Hi everyone, and welcome to the first part of my two-part review for the Nikon D5600. I have some notes because I've tried going off the cuff, and I've tried going script-ridden with my review, and I ultimately haven't been happy with any of the results. So I'm running off of pointers, and hopefully I'm going to hit everything home for the review. Ultimately, the backstory is, um, you know, I've always had an interest in photography. It's gone on and off over the years. A few years ago at this point in time, my wife showed me this picture of the moon, a very nice close-up photo of the moon, taken with the Nikon P900. So that started this waterfall of research, asking questions, research, asking questions, reading reviews, bridge zoom versus DSLR. Could we budget out for a mirrorless? Although really at the time there wasn't a lot of low end mirrorless cameras. There are a few now um, where had I stretched the budget, probably could have looked further into that. So anyway, between research, uh, reviews, asking questions, and what ended up being a little bit of an impulse buy, I ended up with a Nikon D5600. It is a 24.2 megapixel camera with built-in Wi-Fi, and it has a flip-out screen, um, so you can protect the screen when you close it, and also the, the fact that you can use the variable angles makes it so you can, whatever position you might have the, the camera, and you can see what the camera sees, which is particularly handy, especially when the camera is low or high, depending on what you're trying to shoot. In terms of choosing the D5600 with the Wi-Fi and the flip-out screen, now it's something that the, at the time it was the Nikon D3400. There's now the Nikon D3500. Um, it still doesn't have either one of those features. Still a very great camera, but if you're looking for Wi-Fi and a flip-out screen, you're looking for the 5600 uh, or better in terms of uh, Nikon and their cameras. And then I chose the 5600 over at the time what was like the T7i equivalent, um, primarily because of the two lens kit and the price that I found it for at Best Buy when I bought the camera. Uh, that and a lot of the reviews I was reading comparing the 5600 to the T7i tended to just favor the 5600. So when I was first using the camera, and honestly sometimes still do, I was using auto mode. And that's honestly one of the biggest things that I want to talk about in this first part of the review is I, I, I feel like so many photographers, uh, whether they're hobbyists uh, or professionals, they talk about getting out of auto mode. But I think if you either aren't as experienced or it's been a while since you've really picked up a camera, I think auto mode on these DSLRs is particularly handy. Um, a lot of the images that I got when I was first using the camera are, are super great. They're super sharp. They're, the, the, the lighting is, you know, is great on it. And, and it's really hard to, to think of, of picking up this camera in the first place and not having used it in auto mode. In terms of the two kit lenses that came with the camera, it, there's the Nikon 18-55 and the Nikon 70-300. The 18-55 does have built-in image stabilization, so you can get that shutter speed pretty low before you need a, a tripod or, or to somehow stabilize your camera. So it does allow for some pretty nice images at lower shutter speeds. Um, in terms of the 70-300, it certainly has very nice reach to it, but you do have to dial down the, the aperture in order to uh, get a sharper, clear image. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a good lens comparatively to the 18-55. The 18-55 is a much better lens, but for the price in the two lens kit, I say it's a pretty good bang for your buck, which tends to be how I like to shop. I, I tend to, you know, figure out my budget and, and figure out what's the best I can do within that kind of a price range. The camera does have uh, like a scene effects and, and uh, I should say scene modes and effects modes. Um, I haven't used them a lot, uh, primarily because they only save in JPEG and, and the images only come out in those effects, which are things you can always do afterwards with photo editing as well. Uh, so in terms of that, uh, you know, I'll link the specs in, in, the, uh, in the description for this as well as the full specs for the camera. In terms of how the lenses actually work in auto mode, particularly the kit lenses, the 18 to 55 is brilliant. I really can't say I've had a single issue with it. Um, even in some indoor lower light settings. The 70 to 300, um, the camera does favor uh, shutter priority, it, it seems. So when I have the, the lens further out on that 300 end, I do notice that the, that the shutter speed is going up faster. Uh, it tends to go around like 1 400th or 1 500th of a second, um, which is great if you're shooting still, but if you're trying to shoot something moving like wildlife, you might want to switch into shutter priority mode so you can get make sure that that, that shutter speed is going faster to capture what it is you're, you're trying to capture. If it's a bird in flight or some kind of animal, you know, running across the field and you want to get a picture of it. 
So I'm going to share some images that I took with the camera, uh, particularly those with the kit lenses and auto mode, just so you can see for yourself what the quality was like. You can certainly make the, the judgment for yourself whether or not you like the images and what you could potentially get with the camera if you don't already have one and are considering something in this price range from Nikon. So that's it for this first part of this two-part review for the Nikon D5600. If you liked what you saw so far, please like this video, subscribe if you'd like to see more content, uh, and I'll see you again soon for the second part of the review. Thank you.